it's pretty common to find in the personal growth and self-help arena this phenomenon of one book leading to another book which leads to a teacher which leads to a workshop and I think that all that's great I think it taps into sort of following a thread to see where it leads and then finding and discovering things along the way however and you knew there was a however coming huh the challenge that can arise in all of that is this fixated idea similar to attaching to a result but this fixated idea that someone out there has the answer for you. One of the stereotypes that I work with constantly as a life coach is this stereotype that life coaches think they've got the answer for people. And so I'll just go on record right now as saying, I don't have your answers. <laughs> I don't have your answers and I, I'm not a life coach who has the answer for anyone. What I have is a framework that I think is useful. What I have is the ability to hold space for someone while they're trying to see the forest for the trees, um, the ability to brainstorm, the ability to ask questions that are really good clarifying questions. And all of those are skills. However, I don't have the answer. My way is not the right way. I couldn't possibly fathom leaving courageous power without this bigger call for you to trust your own internal wisdom to stop looking at me or my program or some other life coach or some other therapist or some other thing outside of you as having the answers for you. You have your own internal wisdom, your own inner yes, that, that good feeling that responds when you recognize that you're onto something. Follow your inner yes, follow your own inner wisdom, take what you like, leave the rest, and stop thinking that someone out there has the answer, especially the answer for you in your life. When I'm talking about not needing the answer, I'm not saying that there aren't things of value in this program or spiritual practice or, or that you should just go it alone and not take any input from anyone. Of course, input is immensely valuable. What I'm suggesting is that at the end of the day, um, as much as you take things on faith and try them out, be willing to let them go when they're not working and be willing to trust that the answers within are the ones that are most valuable for you. Part of what's dangerous about needing the answer is that it carries with it an energy that something about you is broken and needs fixing. So like, you need the answer because something's wrong with you and somebody else is gonna provide the answer that's going to fix all the things that are wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. You might be thinking, oh really? Have you met me? There's nothing wrong with you. Step into a bigger conception of living than broken and in need of an answer. Step into all the richness that your experience has taught you. You might have made a million mistakes in your life and I bet you if you look back and you're willing to do the work, you can see something you could learn from each and every one of them. And uh, I'd rather talk to somebody who's made a million mistakes and learned from them any day than someone who's made only two or three. You are your own hero. You are your own guru. You are your own, you know, self-help guide, okay? You have more answers than anybody else. Share in the other answers that you find. By all means, take from the pieces along your journey that work for you. Just. Don't get too rigid about saying, this is the way it is. Don't get too rigid about, this is the answer. Start noticing that what the answer could be for you one day could be different the next. Let yourself expand. You are the expert on you.